Life, as I see, is a race against time. Every moment, every second, and every hour. For most people, death is what they fear the most. The greatest fear that I have is dying before achieving anything or nothing in life. The life we have as human beings, or any creatures, is very finite and limited in this planet Earth. Today, I aspire to share all that I can and recall my yesterday in front of all of you. With the very short time that has been given by Story Ellis, what has shaped me for today, where I stand and what I do. My parents, my mom and dad, my only brother, and my entire maternal family in the United States has been through my thick and thins and my biggest inspiration. Family, friends, loved ones, their support, their critiques, and their constructive criticism always takes us forward. And that is also a story of me that took me forward in life. Today, if I share this to you, it will probably be something that you have not heard about me or known about me. That is what I'm going to share today. The untold story of Ivana Manander. Yes, that is what it is. I still take breaths thinking about it. I get nostalgic. I have goosebumps all over my body. Today, where I am today has been shaped because of my strong yesterday. It was breezy summer. Imagine the summer wind, flawlessly fresh. 2013, let's go all the way there. May 2014, I had come to Nepal from the United States for my short summer break. And I love family time, I'm a very family-oriented person, so this was my first time in my four years of undergrad studies in America. And it was my dream, because I was very, very close to my grandparents. I wanted to visit my grandfather's house in Hetona. So we all four together were very excited to take the journey, and we drove to Hetona. It was a Saturday, I still remember. We took a drive. I opened my eyes. It gets more interesting after this. Or traumatic, I don't know. I opened my eyes and I realized I was flying in the air. I was 15, at least 15 feet above the road. I realized I was flying in the air. I just realized when my unconscious eyes opened, I was already above, so above that I felt, okay, now I'm gonna land and there will be a big accident. I don't know what will happen after that. And then I realized, shattering of glasses, trang, and then the doors bumping everywhere, all four corners of the door, here and there. And then I realized we had bumped and hit the cliff and fallen down in a perpendicular form on the road. It was a car accident. We all four were there. My brother, my father, my mom, and me. I blacked out, because I was the most one that was injured. My father and my brother was fine, but my mom and me, we both had had the unexpected. What if, what if, have you guys ever thought that if you would have encountered any unexpected incident, 
in anyone's lives or your own lives. I'm sure everyone has encountered some way or the other, but I had never expected that I would encounter an unexpected and severe car accident. All I remember is my blood, just the blood, red. My brother holding me tight, trying to find the, trying to find the easiest aid and the quickest aid that we could by asking lifts on the road because my dad was really busy calling phone calls after phone calls for the rescue team and his friends and family to come and rescue us. Shortly, I just realized, I was on the cart, if you know the cart, which materials are transported into. That was the only thing that was available. I thought my bone, bone was shattered while I sat on the cart. That was the only emergency, emergency immediate aid that was available. I was rushed to the nearest public hospital in Hintona. And wait, even the doctors didn't know, we didn't know. All I remember was bleeding. A broken nerve inside my nose. Severe injuries in many parts of my body. And the most scary was a broken collarbone for me and my mother. But I don't remember anything. All I remember was I was trying to talk to my parents because they thought I wasn't there anymore. And I thought I wasn't there anymore. I took, kept taking, gasping breaths inside me, trying to inhale air from my nose, which I could not. I realized that I had blacked out. I was trying to talk, I was trying to let them know that I'm here, I'm alive. Mom, you can't hear me, but nobody could. I just saw them screaming and crying and weeping everywhere. <sighs> I thought I lost it. But shortly, I still remember that I thought I had, my breath was completely gone, but it was from my nose that I could not inhale. So quickly, the doctors immediately put oxygen mask, and after maybe hours, at least half a day, I started breathing in normal. I opened my eyes consciously, unconsciously. The first thing I had on my mind is I'm alive. I, re I relived the most extreme challenges and the fierce fear that I never thought I'd face. I relived today and I was reborn that day. I was reborn this way. Second life, make the best out of it. That's all I had in back of my mind. After three months of resting, I was able to recover that and go back to America for finishing my last year of undergraduate in marketing and entrepreneurship. My dad, Mirbu Ali Bononsa, Sukho Pounda, Mati no Daino, or Dukho Pounda, Ati no Daino, Sabar ko fal zail pani mi chonsa. My dad, my papa, I call him, he always used to say this. That was extreme, traumatic, heart aching, an unexpected accident that we never thought we would. We were going for a vacation with happiness and we just realized that we lived. I was lucky to have lived, not lucky that I lived the accident. I think lucky because we all four were alive and we did it together. And on 2014, let's go back in 2014, in the graduation time, flying colors, hats on the air, I graduate. The only things that remain inside me is the red scars in my body. The red scars, which I could not kill, but yes, the experience that I shared. In 2014, I graduated. As a normal girl, as any normal girl, I was a simple girl. I graduated. After that, not just that, there was a lot of surprises still getting interesting in a way to, to, for me and for the entire family. And the last year, like God always gives happiness, sadness at the same time, one after another, 
life is ups and downs, as always. So, probably that was my lucky day. With lots of hard work, dedication, being the only Nepali student in my university, I always felt the urge to represent Nepal anywhere and everywhere I go internationally. And I guess with that, coincident my father's birthday and my a day before my birthday, I earned two awards, international awards, which was the International Student of the Year Award and Dean's Excellence Award in Marketing. I said, ah, oh, at last, hard work actually pays off. Just you need is the will to go on and strive to do better every day. As I was reborn that way, let's do this. Come on, let's do this. And right after that, I started working in a completely different field. I, started, I shifted to New York and my work is at Jersey and I had a very supportive maternal family in New York, as I said, in America. And my entire family and friends in New York supported me well, amazingly in my career. <clears throat> part of my heart always belongs to my home in America too. And part of my heart is always here in Nepal. And that is what kept me striving every day. As I just realized, one fine night, I just was rigorously thinking and thinking and thinking, what is wrong with me? There's something I want to still strive and still something I want to do in life. This is not it. If in education I can represent Nepal internationally, why not something different that I've not tasted or have not experienced? My passion, it was just a passion, not a childhood dream. Miss Nepal is just a passion, has always been a passion. I said, I called my dad promptly that night and I said, Dad, I'm coming back, I'm packing my bags. He was like, what? Why? I said, I plan to go for Miss Nepal, participate in it. Guys, I'm gonna tell you something. It's a very important lesson I learned in life. The failure in life is not losing, but it's not trying at all. It's not trying at all to see what were the risks and opportunities that was available for you. Yes, that is what it is. So keep striving and trying. I tried. I came back to Nepal. I flew in two weeks, not with the idea of winning the crown, but the idea of participating, and I said, representing Nepal internationally. So guess what? I got selected. I was like, oh God, I can't go back to the States now. <laughs> that yes, I'm gonna still come back to the scars that still remain in my body. I was worried about it. I was never not confident, but yes, I was worried. And I have to dedicate this stage to three people in my life, three, four people in my life. My mother being already one, because my mother is someone, and I think everyone's mother is not just the person who gave them birth, but is their true best friend and inspiration everywhere they go. And my mother being from a very creative background and, and, and fashion designer, she was the first one to say, go for it, Ivana, we're always there. So she helped me throughout the entire journey of Miss Nepal training. My dad, I always say it's my mother's dream, my passion, and my father's 24 seven support, and my entire family's continuous and rigorous dedication that brought me where I am today. On 18th of April, how ironic, I would say that year of 2015, I got crowned and a week later, there was devastating earthquake that was faced by our country, Nepal. But guess what? Still, the story all remains of the time that I utilized, one after another. Because 2015 was the only year I could participate. After I won, I realized time is very limited for all of us. And time is what keeps us striving and striving for better things and better opportunities in life. Use your time wisely, properly, at the right time, at the right place, at the right situation, with the right amount of energy that you have. I think with all of that, I earned the Miss Nepal world title. But the story doesn't finish here yet. It's just the beginning. As I said, it's just the passion. Being a family-oriented girl, for me, I always had the support of family. But yes, 
Most importantly, there's two male people who've supported me always. After my father, it would be my uncle Neeraj, who had flew all the way from States to me, with me, in order to, for me to conquer for the Miss Nepal stage. And he always used to say, I have three degrees, but what is the use of the degree if you cannot strive your passion? Go follow your dreams and passion. Degree will come and go, money will come and go. I left my job in the States for Miss Nepal. I don't regret a bit because education, work, materialistic things, money is always going to come and go in life. I started dreaming from the heart from that very moment. But yet, it was not enough. As time passed by, so I was fortunately very lucky to have found Pragun in my life, blessed in my life as a husband and my best friend. He always used to say this to me and has done this. Knowledge is something that no one can take away from you. So I had in the back of my mind always, education complete going to back with you. Obviously because my master's I'm going to go strive to do that and make things balanced in life with the limited time that I have. Family is not a boss, I'm a passion, I'm a follower, I'm a career, I'm a career, I'm a career. Two of them are complete, passion and family. About career, what can I do better? is still the question that remains. And my husband also says that, and he's given me that much of strength and support in everything and whatever I do. And the stage for today is for him too, saying that he was the only actual person who actually taught what love is and the actual meaning of love for me because I didn't know what was it. And he always used to say, love ma, always remember to give more than to take anything back. Because love is all about giving, not about taking. And today, I love to share this, spread this around all of you, that it is important the time that you're given, as from the day you're born until whenever you live, strive everything with your heart, every moment, because you don't want to go back and regret and unchange things that has already happened. I cannot change the accident, but yes, I can change the present. I can grow to my future. I can nurture my future. Remember, guys, it's the present and future that matters, not the past. Because I am where I am today, as shaped from my past. And the story that I am sharing is not the story of trauma, I would say, is a story that made me realize that time is limited for all of us. And once you get that time in your hand and you get that second life when you get reborn, you just realize everything you can do is in this life, not the life that's going to come later. Because I don't know when is that going to come or that time going to come. So I love every inch every aspect of the scars I have today. Scars, for me, is a beautiful reminder. Is the scars are the ones that I admire. Is a beautiful piece of art in my body that has shaped me from a strong yesterday for a striving, growing today. Yes, those are the scars through which I was reborn today. And I'm living every moment with every opportunity that I have. So guys, all I can say is life is very short. Live it to the fullest and make the best out of it. Make the best fruitful life out of it. Guys, let's do it together. Love you all. Thank you so much. Namaste.